I don't know where my phone is, but I'm not gonna worry about it. We'll okay. call it. And we can go to Porter's later. They're, they've got it. You had your phone with you in the bathroom when you first got the bottle. So what's the plan, Doc? Well, I guess we're gonna talk about the old house. We're Tom and Julie. I think that's probably in the title somewhere. <laughs> but we moved to Neotiche in 1989 as part of the work that I was doing with a company called Valley Hope. And uh, Valley Hope said, you have to live in the town that you serve, but we needed to have a house that had four bedrooms because of the age of you kids. So we decided to look around and the only house available in town was this one, which was reluctantly shown to us by a real estate agent because it was in such rough shape. But we, I came from a large house and Julie kind of liked it, so I went through and she came down and looked at it and we decided, loved, okay. Yeah, we loved it. We had a seventh grader, fourth, third grader, and a four-year-old, and... We came from a real tiny place yeah. in Norton, and we came through here and the kids ran through the door and said, oh my gosh, we're living in a mansion. It looks like <laughs> it's a mansion it's and a they mansion. ran upstairs, so and let's was, come in and we'll show we'll you around. We'll tell you around. more about it inside. Come on it's, in. It's kind of fun. So when we came in here, it didn't look like anything like this. Getting through the front door would be an adventure because the, the porch was so rotted out you could actually step through the floor. And, we, and it was just uh, terrible. But we came inside and we thought, we saw potential where other people thought they saw disasters. I saw size because we, our marriage, we started out in a little um, actually 12 by 60 trailer and then a 14 by 70 trailer which was great but and then we moved into a smaller home uh, five years later. We lived in Hayes and we had our possessions in a 14 by 70 trailer and we moved the trailer to where we had our first jobs in Norton, Kansas and there's something rather unnerving to be in a car following your entire life's possessions at 70 miles an hour yeah. being pulled by a truck but we Started there, came down to Neotiche. And here we are. And went. this house was huge and it had shag carpet and there was gaps in the wall and there was leaking win uh, windows and no insulation, uh, old wiring from the 1900s. But we started with uh, one room and began doing a remodel, did most of the work ourselves uh, in certain stages. But we'll go upstairs. We'll start with the very first room in the house that we did. Project, yeah. Before well, we go into Jessica's room. Can I say oh, something? No, oh, I already started a sentence. Kids, the kids, uh, they came up and they decided what room they wanted. Yeah. Jessica ran to that one with the pink wallpaper. Jeremiah took this one and then Adam got that one. Yeah, but we liked it because it had the bedrooms upstairs and it had a bath. But the attic, there's also another floor up here with a huge attic but it has seven foot ceilings, unfinished, but it was, it was a gargantuan. And this room when we started had a big hole in this ceiling. You could actually look up in the attic and the wind blew through and there was a door back on the wall behind you. And that door um, was so bad that when it snowed, she could get small drifts in this room and it was freezing all the time. Yeah. So we started with this room because it needed the most attention and that's where we first learned how to finish a floor. A friend of ours did the sheetrock work and we began room by room doing each room and, and that was a process of over, what, 35 yeah, years 30, or more. Yeah, 34 years. And the room, what we loved about the house, it had a lot of beautiful old features like the fireplace and the tile. The tile was missing, but we can never find matching tile because that's very hard but we just left it like that because it kind of shows that the house has been lived in. Uh, this place was one time a boarding house uh, for the railroad uh, that used to have two railroads out here. So people would come in here and stay overnight like the traveling salesmen and such. So the house has had a lot, yeah. a lot of history since it was built in 1909. 1909. And yeah. uh, the mural on the wall, yeah. uh, Jessica saw a similar picture in a magazine and she said, I would love to have that on the wall. So one of her friends, uh, mother, Anita Wilson, was the art teacher at the high school at the time. And she came in here during the summer and painted that. And we've just left it. It's just amazing. And a couple of Easter eggs in it. Yeah. Um, the bluebird, 
And the reason why the Bluebird is in there because J Julie would often refer to Jessica as uh, blue, 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 your Bluebird or something. She liked it. But over here was down another little treasure. If you look on that. A little ladybug. And we call Jessica a little ladybug a lot of times. So Yeah. And another feature of these old houses were the closets. So they had one door that was in here. And, and a space this big. This was all walled. And it was only, they went all the way back. The space from here to here was as deep as the closet, which is about two feet. But then it went from here clear to that wall. Right. But they hung most of their clothes here because they didn't have a lot of different changes of clothes. They didn't have many clothes. But they didn't need storage. So we took all that stuff out and put in bifold doors in most of these rooms to make it more use of the, of the closet space. And we began insulating. We started insulating this house and putting in new windows because they, it was just yeah. horrible. The energy cost was yeah. terrible. This is the bathroom. Now you have to understand when this house was built, there was no indoor bathrooms. Oftentimes what they would do is use an extra space and just put a bathroom where it fit. And so they were like an afterthought. So they were small, cramped, and crowded. And this is the original tub when they put it in, and is it? Cast uh, iron. Cast iron tub. And this will stay with the house. Uh, it's just, it's an antique itself. But it's a great uh, place that we bathe little kids in, and, and it was just wonderful. And it was stained and, and, and nasty, and we right. uh, refinished this and resurfaced this. Right. So and used. there was a doorway here, right here, and for this commode area, so it was a little bit more private, but it just made this such a small space. So we took that out and actually then repurposed, used the woodwork in another part of the house. And so we saved all that so it matches downstairs. And then we uh, got all new windows, put a little unit, got a nice little sink. And this has been quite the uh, thing for the last 20 years. The trick was to how to make a very small tiny bathroom not feel closed or crowded. This is an unusual room in that you have a 6 foot by 15 foot room that has four openings. The door you're next to, the door over here, the door to the attic, and the window. And so you'll notice that the elements are that the bathtub is, goes linear and then this is an open shelf. <coughs> This is a pedestal sink and not a vanity. So everything is made to kind of have an open feel and it, it happened to work. This is another yeah. one of our projects. And then on the ceiling, to keep the mode for the old looking house, we used embossed, embossed wallpaper and we put that up and used it in several rooms in this house to just keep that old charm to it. Yeah, have the effect of a tin ceiling without using tin. Well, we'll stop off here and this is a one of the bedrooms. That, by the way, we redid that bathroom ourselves. Right. Um, this here is another room that, since everything happened over a period of time, we take different design elements of things we saw. And I guess one of the restaurants we ate had a big, broad chair rail around the room. We thought, oh, we got lots of wide wood, so we'll try that. And uh, we did a little textured wall effect in here. But uh, this is a room that uh, is... is Comfortable. It's, I mean, it's, it's just got a lot, very of, comfortable. lot of space in it. This started out to be our oldest son's room, and then when he left, our youngest son, Adam, uh, just hopped into it because he thought, yes, finally get a room. So uh, so he was the last one, but we kind of call it Adam's room because he was the last one here, and everybody knows where it's at. So. And the, there's two little closets. There's yeah. a regular closet now. That's okay. And the yeah. regular closet here, and then there's another one tucked under the stairway. And, and the kids, the little kids love to hide in great there. Great hide and seek. Now, this house is great for hide and seek. Now, we'll go down to, further to the right here. This room was... Uh, we now have renamed it. We call it Holly's room. Holly or room, Maddie's or the, or the room. room yeah. or Maddie's room. This was actually the last room that Julie and I did. We got so good at refurbishing things, we came in here one afternoon and said that the wallpaper here is fine, down below was painted. We didn't like it, and we began stripping and working on it, and we had this completely done with beadboard around here, a tall. rail with a lip on the top of it, and, a, and again, embossed ceiling, and then did the uh, crown molding around the inside, and we had it done in two days. Yeah. We just went after it and got it done. Yeah. Tom installed the beadboard and he was real slick on the, the putting the trim in that little ledge. And he and I worked really well through the years on, he let me help pick out the colors. 
But this was original wallpaper when we moved in here and it was in great shape, fits the house, we left it. Yeah, and, and we re all the floors in here that you see, we refinished every one of the floors ourselves. And that's a lot. Now we'll go back to the master bedroom. And this one is, um, it has been a, a different work that we, for, well, this is probably one of the first, uh, earlier rooms that we did. Again, you can see we have a different chair rail around here uh, because we just kind of experimented with things. But again, we like the embossed wallpaper because it kind of gave the old feel, but we used contemporary colors so it didn't get too overbearing. And we also um, just tried some different looks. The same way as we talked about earlier, we opened up the closet by putting in bifold doors so you can use all the closet instead of a little piece of it. Plenty of room. Yeah. Now we're gonna go ahead and head downstairs, but before we go all the way down, I wanted to point out something here. This is a, in the stairway, or stairwell, was it just a huge blank space. And Julie and I were trying to figure out what can we do to kind of tighten yeah. it up a little bit. And one thing to recall is that we took a stained glass window out of there that wasn't set right. And so then we missed something there, so. Yeah, once we took the window out, it was a big blank spot. So we bought an oversized clock that runs on a little battery power, took some nylon cord with a couple of window weights that we salvaged out of the windows when we replaced the windows, and made a modern interpretation of a grandfather clock. And it's been there ever since. Okay, we're gonna go look at the rest of the house now, but where you are at the moment, in the, you're looking down in the foyer, and as you come down, you'll notice in the corner here, there's this big grandfather clock, and there's also this little art piece here. So Julie knows about as much as that as I do. Yeah, that was something they were, they both came from Tom's mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, Bill and Mabel Nickel, and it's just treasures that we have held on to. Oh, I just noticed, I think, a little dragonfly. That's what that is. The grandfather clock is not all that old, but this, this piece here, this Victorian piece, is just kind of an object of art that they had. And this, this came over from um, England and with the family. One of our nieces, Sarah Belcher, <laughs> told us the other day, um, she said when she was a little girl, she'd look at that and think there was a dead body in there. Because they called it an, an urn. <laughs> an urn. And, and I thought that was funny. Okay. When we started redoing this room, again, we did all the woodwork in this house, and I'm going to kind of explain that a little bit. One of the big refinishing projects was this stairway, because it was essentially the color of that grandfather clock, but it was old varnish. And so we began the process of stripping that over a period of time. And when you first look at this, we thought a huge task. But when you say we're going to work on it two, three hours a night after work, and that's how we did almost all of this stuff here. We'd work two, three hours a night and uh, strip a little bit. And finally, we found the, the beauty of this all underneath. Now, the woodwork, and we're kind of proud of this, every stick of wood, every place in here, the baseboards, the trim work, everything, the doors, we removed all of it and, and we stripped it down, sanded, refinished and put it all back in in place. And we counted up the number of times that we handled each piece of wood until it went back on. It was 15 steps. And it was every piece here in the house, but we did it because we loved it. And some people go on expensive vacations and some people buy expensive luxury items. Our, our relaxation and our enjoyment was bringing this house back to life. Yeah, and we really work really well together. We get a plan, we tackle it, and uh, we just persevere until we're done. Plus, we were both working full time and raising kids. But I think uh, when we finally did this foyer was when all the kids were out of the house because it was so much easier when Adam finally left for college then we could tear this place up. And I'll never forget the, the Christmas when the, all the kids came home for the, for the holidays. We had had this all done. And then the next rooms that we'll walk through, we, um, we just hadn't all of a sudden it. hadn't touched it yet. We're gonna wait about six months. And then I think it was Jeremiah, Jessica, and Adam all said, we're here. We can move all the furniture over, get it over on the other side of these panel doors. And so 
We did. Yeah. And we moved it all and said, let's just do it. So let me let me explain okay. something about repurposing. We're really big on uh, what can we do from our previous families and reincorporate in here. Her her mom and dad, yeah. um, Helen and Gilbert Smellsley, my parents, Bill and Mabel Nickel, out on the farm in a trunk, stored away all a lot of years, and I finally got a hold of it. But there was some cloth in there, and this cloth is actually um, curtains drapery from the home drapery curtains that we they had in the house in Stockton, Kansas, in the 1940s. And this drapery curtain materials probably was made in the 30s. And so we salvaged that and friends of ours made these uh, yeah. drapes for us. And it's just something that we saved and it's just a nice little touch that will probably stay with the house. Yeah. And it's like pointing out different things. This is a precious picture to me of the Good Shepherd. And it was on my Corning farm. It was above the piano at the house and I always loved it. Now let's go in and move into here, and uh, this is kind of cluttered at the moment, but this is this room. Uh, we've always called it the TV room because with our family, we eventually got another TV, but we always, as soon as computer generation came about, we just decided for our kids' best sake, we always set up a computer, and, and then, so this became the computer room. But it has a lot of charm with the fireplace back here. But the fireplace, going to it first, it was never painted. A lot of these older houses, as soon as they did, they went put white paint or something on it. That was left untouched and it has some beautiful tile. It's a mirror of the one that's upstairs in the bedroom we saw earlier. Uh, the fireplace insert metal has stayed with the house. We're kind of surprised that it was still there. They originally were uh, gas fireplaces, but they've been sealed off because of um, energy um, savings and that's uh, you know we're so glad that they are still with us right above what you're looking at there is the, what we call one of the nickel lamps it uh, probably goes back into the late 1800s 1900s but it's uh, it's a colored lamp it used to be um, uh, kerosene nice thing about the mantle is that clock on the end my dad back in uh, Stockton Kansas kind of got into a clock hobby for a while and he bought a whole bunch of different clocks I don't know the history of who owned it, but it's very elaborate. It does work. It needs servicing, but it uh, is a lovely clock with a lot of great character, which I love. The cabinetry, uh, I worked for Prestige Cabinets years ago. I used to be in sales and marketing, and every now and then uh, there would be a, a set of cabinets that came up in, uh, in production that didn't meet standards or something, and it would go into an auction. And this set of cabinets here came into the auction, um, and I bought them and did some modifications of them. They are basically kitchen cabinets, but I cut the base of them off so that they'd sit lower to the floor, put a top on it, we use it as a desk. And the piece that was in the center here is over on the opposite side of the room, and that's what we used to put, um, at the time we put a TV monitor DVD uh, on that player DVD under. player and such like that. Now it's, it's holding things as we're preparing the house for sale, so we have a lot of junk up here right at the moment, but it was a nice matching piece and uh, solid yeah. maple. Definitely yeah. will stay with the house because yeah. it's built in. A couple in. of the art pieces up here are of uh, Julie's sister. This one here. Yeah. Sunflowers. Not this. Lou. Yeah. yeah, Mary Lou, my oldest sister, she's an artist and uh, she's taught art classes in Topeka for, I bet it's 20 some years and uh, she's been painting for a long time and she just gets better all the time. So let's there go back know. out where we came from. We'll go through the foyer and go into the living room. As I mentioned, this house at one time was a boarding house. It had been used in a family uh, and the use of these bigger homes back in the day were so much different than what they do now. They used to have a formal parlor, they would call it. And people would come in who did not have business in the house, but for greetings and purposes like that or business, so they, they would meet in the parlor. This house had a door that used to be behind the TV, full-size entry door, so it had two front doors. If you were uh, conducting business with a homeowner at the time, you came into that door, they would pull these pocket doors shut, and over on the opposite side, there used to be a wall here that's long been gone, but it also had pocket doors. And they would shut those doors and they would uh, conduct their business. 
Now, the reason why they had two doors, the rest of the family could come in the house. They'd walk in the front door, but how would they get to the rest of the house? They had back behind here was another pocket door that they could open up and enter into the rest of the house without disturbing the parlor. Um, we took those doors out. They were unnecessary. The culture has changed. They don't use that anymore. Not the formal parlor. It opened up the room. A lot of fun. It, it, there was a lot of work involved. Unfortunately, we had some contractors that helped us on, along the way. Uh, we knew the plan. I knew how to sheetrock and mud and insulate and wire, but I couldn't do it all the time simply because I was busy. What Julie's turning on over there in the corner is what's called a nickel lamp. That came from England on and a came ship. on a ship and came across the uh, United States in a covered wagon and uh, has been passed down through the family and now we're in the possession of it. That is a very special piece. Now, we're gonna go on the other side of the room where the wall used to be behind this couch, no longer is there. And we have our dining area. Um, and with the changes of houses, they don't use the dining area as much, but we still love it because of the furniture pieces that dining room sets used to be. This is a solid walnut set with uh, eight chairs and with a matching buffet. And it's just a, almost a beautiful art piece in its own right and um, we just love it. So we made this kind of a formal, informal dining room. Uh, we've had a lot of family gatherings here. A lot of uh, family and friends have been with us for um, over the years. And it's just been a delight having this room and this, the room in this house, in fact, in order to be able to entertain so many people. Back behind Julie, there's a piece that comes from your oh, family. Oh yeah, this was, uh made for my mother who my mother was born in 1922 and her dad made this high chair for her uh, and so it's been in our our family i fortunately didn't have to set any of my own children in here to eat but when mom and dad moved off the farm 20 some years ago 25 years ago um, this is one of the pieces that I, I loved and all the my siblings agreed it looked great in my old home and uh, so there we have it. Now as I talked about earlier I used to work for a cabinet company and one of the things we always talked with our clients was how to use kitchen cabinets in a more creative manner and I've got two examples in this room. This is a beautiful tall boy hutch that's with uh, it's called rustic hickory and that is a solid hickory, but it has a lot of design and, and, and uh, detail features in it because when you're trying to sell something, you want to sell all the things you have, so you design it all in one piece. And uh, it was on tour for many of the shows I was involved with, and then when it got retired out of service, um, I volunteered if they, were, if they weren't going to do anything with it. Uh, I'd like to bring it and put it in this house, and, and they graciously said, fine, that's good, and so we did. Another thing I did was take prestige cabinets that I bought at an auction, from Prestige, and I use them to chop, you know, chop, uh, cut them down, recess them into this wall, and turn this into a built-in china hutch, which we also use for storage of our grandchildren's toys and things like this. And uh, we can also display some of the fine china from my mother, and some of the uh, memories that we Listen. have of our parents and. and uh, grandparents. Tom's parents and then this is my grandparents We've on got dad's a, side. The one in the center is her grandparents and the one on the left are Julie's yeah. parents. It's Smellsley in the center. That's my dad's parents. Yeah. Now this unit here was built with pieces out of uh, extra wood that I had in the house. So I cut pieces out here, put it here, and then I took the base piece from down here, split it in half, moved it up to the top, flipped it over, installed it again and then I used some pieces of leftover from taking different windows out of the house and mounted that underneath. So this unit and then painted it. So this unit looks like it's been here forever but it's only been here since we've done the remodeling of this room. Kind of happy with that the way it turned out. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. Now to the kitchen. Again we apologize because we've got so many things out while we're cleaning out drawers and closets, but I won't go into a lot of remodels of this, but we have, uh, again, all prestige cabinets, solid oak in this room, and we used tile in the backsplash. We've redone this room twice yeah. uh, with a complete remodel, and then, no, we did it, the complete remodel first time, and then we had took that remodel and changed that here 
about two years ago, we were just, uh, and it happens to us, we sit in the house and we're looking around here going, you know, this sure could use updating. I wonder what we should do. And so what well, we decided to go in there and start uh, stripping wallpaper and patching the wall and then uh, repainting. And next thing you know, we were, we were done. A lot of things look traditional in here, then all of a sudden you come to these really bold, fun, fun uh, uh, fixtures that kind of give a unique uh, uniqueness to the, to the house. Yeah, on this last little shelving unit that we put up here, we have mementos from both sides of the family. The, the blue jar up on this left side is from my parents' farm, and that's one of Dad's oil can tops. And then next to it on the right is Tom's mother, Mabel, their china. And then up above that is Bill's kerosene lamp. This little bird we found the other day used to sit in the kitchen in Stockton. Uh, but the, the rest of them is just sprinkles of some gifts that we have been given. And our granddaughter Ellie gave me this and I thought it was perfect for uh, the uh, kitchen. Yeah, one other thing that our granddaughter Ellie gave us, since she's an artist and a graphics person, she made this for us. And it's a quote serving tray, but I thought, eh, it's just too pretty. Yeah. So we use that up there for Yeah, and that to, will... To share with people. All of that will be coming with us in our new home. Now that we go to the, another part of the house, there's a story behind it. When we first came to this home, the house ended right about here. It was all back, a little bit of a back porch. And in here was a tiny little bathroom that had a commode and a sink and a shower all jammed into one. Then there was a back door. Then over here was a washer and dryer set. And it was the only other bathroom in the house and it was dinky. So down below where in the kitchen was a utility basement that had the hot water heater and the water softener. And every time we got a heavy ring, we'd have dampness in the, in the basement and it would put out the water heater. And I said, you know, I can't keep taking salt down through a trap door under there and dinking with that water heater. So we're gonna add on so it'd have more room for those, those appliances. The trouble is, as Julie says, well, if we're gonna expand, let's make a room a little bigger so we can get a sh larger shower. I said, okay, she goes, and it'd be nice if we could have a double vanity while we're at it. I go, okay, we'll do that. And you know, if we're gonna go crazy, maybe, maybe we ought to think about a jet tub. Oh, I, I said, okay. And oh, be nice if I had a closet where I could take all of my clothes in one location instead of having to switch clothes around different closets at the change of season. So by the time we got done from expanding a little bathroom just a little bit, we added 650 square feet. We'll start here first. And this is the laundry area and the back door. And one thing that I've said several times, I like space. I don't like being cramped. So instead of having to worry about if somebody's at the washer and dryer and a little narrow passageway in between, we made lots of room. This is an Afghan I found actually today when we were cleaning out that Grandma Mabel actually knitted this. This is her work, so that is staying with us. It's lovely, lovely colors. These are prestige. These were oak, and I painted these a different color because I wanted to have a color statement besides beige or, or honey oak. Then down below, I found a pair of cabinets that I painted black, which was from prestige sanded through and gave them an antique look. And then over here was yet another style of cabinet that I wanted to make sure I could uh, match with the rest. So we did it with colors, you know, red and black glaze, reddish and black glaze and different type of hardware. Tied so it all kind of ties together. Yeah. We did all the finish work. Julie and I did all the uh, trim work and the beadboard and everything else. Right. In this room. And here's something else that uh, I did. Again, Julie and I oftentimes would repurpose things. For example, this is an industrial table with a big, huge uh, wooden top, industrial legs. And so I took it all apart, sanded it down, refinished the legs and cleaned them up and then put industrial coatings on them and put it back together. And we use it for a, a general purpose table and, and it's absolutely great. Julie has a story on this cabinet yeah. that is, that's kind of fun. My uh, great grandfather, August Hayfley, that is my mother's grandfather, at the age of 12, he was over in Germany, and his mom had passed away when he was little, 
and he his his new stepmother was not nice to him at all so he he truly ran away from a stepmother and he got on a ship at the age of 12 and came to the United States and he was a already at that young age was a woodworker and this cabinet is an original of what he made he made a small kitchen cabinet set there was a base to it but this is what he made for his bride before they got married we had this out at the farm for years and in fact we had the base of it down in the potato cellar right out our back door on the farm and mom had that on the the base of it was in there for a lot of years but over the years the, the moisture hurt it but this mom loved the cabinet took it to the milk barn and had it in and this is why the green and she had it in there for a lot of years where she she kept all the medications for the uh, uh, cows when we in our milk barn the crazy thing is i grew up there you know my whole life but never once did mom tell me that her grandpa made that because when we moved mom and dad off of the farm I told her, I says, Mom, I really love that little green cabinet in the milk house. And she said, you do? I said, I love it. She said, well, you can have it. And I said, she said, you know, my grandpa August made that. And she told me the story. I had never heard the story before. It was priceless. Can you imagine 12 years old and just saying, I'm going to go to America and have the wherewithal and the intelligence and the perseverance to travel by yourself with nothing going to a foreign land where you didn't speak the language but, and wind up and those, building a legacy. Those kids at that age were already yeah. adults. Okay, now we're gonna go into the, the other part of the bathroom. And uh, actually, I would like to tell the real version of the story of this large bathroom. Working at Prestige, Tom did acquire this whole double vanity that he said Julie wanted. Well, he brought this home, I thought, well, my gosh, okay, so we might as well build the room around it, and that's what I did. And it was large enough that we, we thought, okay, we can put a shower over on this side, and we can um, do a jet tub since we had the space, and he had, he had worked and we had saved money for it, so we just thought, let's go ahead and make this nice. And we have a wonderful walk-in closet here, We've, we've truly been blessed with this. One of the things, I, again, I go back to the same story, I, always, I don't, like, don't like to be crowded, but every bathroom that we've ever had of every house was small, tiny, and you couldn't get two people in there, and it was just, and I said, nope, we're gonna make a lot of room, and so it kind of went crazy. The, one of the interesting design elements of this was we wanted a lot of natural light, but every time you look at most bathrooms, especially in, in a community of any town where there's population, even in the country, most of the windows have shades or curtains on them for privacy. Well, I went outside when we were talking about building this and I got on a step ladder and I went up to the height where the floor was to be and I stood on the step ladder to look and see and I noticed that there was no second floor houses around this neighborhood at all. So that told me that we could build transom lights, which these are up here, transom windows, excuse me. So we can let in all the natural light and not have to have any blinds or curtains because it's completely private in here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it provides just a wonderful flood of natural light during the day. Stained glass window. Yeah, and as Julie mentioned earlier in our video, upstairs in that stained glass window, we saved that. And that is the stained glass window out of this house. And I think it was part of the original construction. We're not certain, but it certainly is a, a beautiful little example of it. And there's also an example of cut glass in one of the windows here too. This house, when it was built, was not a high-end home, but it was an upper middle class home. So it had some of the elements of uh, the higher end homes, but not, but not a lot. It was just a lot of space inside of here. So the, the luxury of this room here is we can move around and, and we can not bump into each other all the time. The jet tub has been used quite a bit like Julia in her nursing career. It's a great relaxation for muscles and such, so we've just really enjoyed this particular space. Now we're gonna go outside and look at the backyard. When we moved here, it was an absolute mess. There was 
no, uh, there was a chain link fence, no uh, uh, shrubbery or landscaping whatsoever. And that was one of our bigger challenges in this house to make it look good. Now we're on the back step. When we came here, this was just grass and a very small bald cypress. No garage, just a storage building and a gravel driveway. And over the years, we added the garage and the patio that's about a thousand square feet of, of stamped um, patio, stamped concrete. What we've done with this was to try to look like it's been here for a while. We have the brick edging look, but down here, if you look in the certain areas, and Julie will find one, here's an example right over here. You'll see what looks like a leaf fossil, and they're all over here because when the people were running the concrete, they were concerned about the leaves falling out of the trees and everything, getting on the wet concrete. I said, no, push them on in. I said, this will have, quote, fossils for the grandkids to find, and when little kids come to visit, they start looking for these fossils in the in the, and, in the yard. Yeah, and one thing I'd like to point out, because this tree won't last forever, uh, this is a Japanese weeping cherry that when Adam had gotten out, it was a summer out of his sixth grade, I believe, he had Jim Hazen for a teacher, and he, uh, Jim Hazen's wife owned a floor shop downtown, and Adam worked uh, for him for several hours on Saturdays, and at the end of the season, this little tree uh, did not sell. And he brought it home, and it was the weirdest little thing. But we planted it, but it had some character. And he told Adam it'd make a really nice tree. Well, your dad being kind of from, well, Western Kansas, and trees go straight up, and they don't make weird curves. Um, he just didn't know if he liked the looks of it, and he kind of chopped one branch off one time. But when Adam and I were determined we were going to make this thing survive, and we watered it, and I don't know how much miracle Grow we put on this, but Dad didn't know it, but we just gave miracle Grow all the time, and it's turned into a wonderful tree, and it's actually ending the, in its life. It's, it's living past. They usually live between 20 and 25 years, and it's topped out at 25, but it's been a wonderful thing in our backyard that makes this just a charming place. And I remember in the early years, I thought this was the ugliest backyard ever, but this is one of the things that made it beautiful. And then the other tree I want to point out is this magnolia tree. When Jessica was 15, she gave me that for Mother's Day. And uh, we, it, it just survived and we kept, we came out here during the winters and beat snow off of it so the branches went and get broke and, and it's done really well. So. And the other, the, speaking of the trees, you know, that, that's a lesson to be learned. If, if people would give a tree to one another as a gift, it's still giving 25, 30 years later and beyond, which is kind of neat. This tree, for example, was in the backyard. It's a bald cypress, and when we moved here, I think the diameter of it was probably a foot, yeah. maybe a little over 14 inches. And today, it's massive, provides a huge amount of shade and shelter and uh, enjoyment for us. The bald cypress tree, coupled with the uh, um, pecan trees over there, coupled with the magnolia and our ash tree out over here. We just have a lot of continual shade in the yeah, backyard. It's a, it's a it canopy all when they all get, yeah. it's still pretty early for the bald cypress to be leaf, leafed out, but it, it's just a real canopy out here. And then we added uh, leather leaves, planted those, and the reason why we had that, we wanted a living fence at one time, but it also helps provide and knocks down some of the noise. The cast iron street sign, 11th and Indiana, that's our address, that's our intersection out here, and when they changed them out, uh, to new signage, I asked the city if I could obtain that and they graciously al allowed us to have the 11th in Indiana. And for the garage, I've always liked cars and vehicles and so the garage was kind of my home domain. We don't have to go into it, but it's a finished garage on the inside and then there's a shop area up front that it, I, would, I would recommend to anybody building a garage, if you can, put a restroom in there because when you get dirty and grubby, you don't have to terrorize the house. <laughs> by uh, making use and so it's very very handy to have that outside very handy and running water yeah 
So. That's the backyard. It is, of course, it's just the early spring season. The plants aren't really growing yet. The grass hasn't been uh, fully flushed out. Yeah. But it's going to be a very inviting place. When it, this is one of the most popular places for our guests to hang out is back here. Along with our dogs. And that's the Grand Tour. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, we appreciate it. Now we're on the west side of the house. We're going to go down this brick sidewalk. I found this when we moved here. We started working outside and cleaning up trash. And I noticed under some of the turf was some brick. And I began working and I had to uncover a ton of dirt. But I found the brick sidewalk underneath. And it has back here is one of the bricks from the VVV Brick and Tile Company in Neodache, Kansas which there are many brick and tile companies around this area. I just happen to be one of them. We're gonna walk down here to the West flower, flower Bed and I won't say much about it because that's not my domain. I enjoy flowers, but Julie's the flower person. Well, when, when we first moved here, um, you see these lime, these uh, limestone, these stones, there was a double layer. And Jeremiah, as a seventh and eighth grader, he put a lot of muscle in this and he helped dad. We, they broke the mortar between them and lifted the other ones and they hauled them around the backyard. And so then it made it manageable much better because you couldn't see plants above that double. Through the years, I've collected a lot of plants from different friends. It has just been a joy, but probably about 10, 10, 15 years ago maybe, we did this, the, the whole flower bed was just overrun with extra plants that we didn't need. So we got landscaping paper and then put that down and we've been working on it ever since and it just kept the weeds down and it's just been a joy. Yeah, so this is yeah. Solomon's seal here and we have a nine, nine bark. We have tulips, I have lovely tulips that, that bloomed already. Chrysanthemums in there. These little plants here are actually from my farm. Uh, we brought some from the Corning farm and they're flocks and they, they have the big kind of a lavender ball of uh, blooms. Anyway, up here, we have a heritage lily here. It's, it's a big, beautiful uh, lily when it's grown. It has big fronds. And then we have lamb's lamb ear here. and some lilies. Those are tiger lilies there. Candy tuff is here. And we're waiting for the cannas back in here to come in. More flocks and then we have a really nice hydrangea. Beautiful pink blooms. And then this is a, a friend of mine who has passed away I can't remember the name of this, but it's a wonderful plant that black swallowtail larvae thrive on this. So it'll be during the summer when the black swallowtail butterflies, um, they lay eggs and these, it's just, a beautiful, just beautiful to watch. It's usually loaded and if I have enough of them, they'll completely strip, uh, strip it off. But it's just been fascinating. And these are two uh, Stella or Stella Deora sun lilies that Billy Porter gave me years ago. Crepe myrtles. And, and as we come around the front of the house, the original house had the old fashioned spirea. And we finally took that out. And we went to a landscaping company and we took pictures and measurements and we said we want a lot of different color. So I think Adam came home from college one time and we planted 18 different plants. Most of the things that you do in a house, sometimes you spend a lot of money and don't see any of it. In this case, uh, underneath this house, because it's on, on a clay soil base with limestone foundation, the moisture and the content of the soil makes the house actually move a little bit. So underneath this house, we put steel beams and concrete piers and cribbing and everything to kind of help hold it steady. So anyway, the concrete piers and such to kind of stabilize the house. We also did something that, that you do see, the front porch, as I mentioned, when we first came in and owned this house, you could actually walk and step through the porch. It was dangerous. We went back and put composite porch decking on here. The porch is unique in that from this corner here all the way down to the other end around the corner, it's 72 feet. There are 11 columns 
that hold up the front porch of this uh, place here. And it looks like somebody dropped us off some shipping boxes. Yeah, they did. So that's appreciated. And then in the back, of course, we have a hawthorn tree, a maple tree here. So it's just been a really glorious house. And uh, we're hoping that the next people who occupy the house love it as much as we did. Yeah. And these are just some more perennials that we have um, planted here during the, during the years. So on this corner here, this was given to us by some dear friends. Uh, it's a um, Japanese rose bush. And a good friend, Francie Curry, gave us this when Tom and I lost both of his parents. And that was such a nice gift, and it has just been a wonderful thing. And then we have some hostas here and some more Solomon seal. This is a type of vinca and uh, some more of the Solomon seal. And this is a flowering quince bush, and it's, it has the real pretty red flowers in early March. But these rocks that you see here, we went on a quest when we wanted to do some landscaping in the backyard. And even Jeremiah went down, uh, was down in Oklahoma and found some wonderful red uh, sandstone and we have in the backyard. But Tom, Mr. Muscles here, there, there you go. Tom, I think we're about finished up with our tour of the house and glad you came along with us and we've had wonderful 34 years here we're ready to pass this on uh, to another family or just anybody that would love the house they don't even have to have children we just want them to love the house like we do well, the, the fact of the matter is anybody who gets a home sometimes looks at the size of the project and, and gets overwhelmed we did this in bits and pieces and stages and anybody can learn how to take a marginal piece of property and turn it into a home that's cherished by family and friends. And uh, don't be afraid to try, because the results oftentimes will surprise even yourself. That's all we have. Thank you. Thank you.